Would you care for a cup of coffee? Oh, no, thank you. Mrs. Colombo, thank you for coming. Would you come in, please? Mrs. Colombo, I'm Charles Houston. I'm happy you could join us. Would you care to sit down? Mrs. Colombo? We've never met before, have we? No. Have I ever done anything to hurt you? No. We live near you. Uh, is it possible I offended you in some way that I... No. Mrs. Colombo, my wife died by an unfortunate accident. Why are you doing this to me? When you called about the intercoms, I questioned Mr. Houston. I told him about your hearing the voices. Mr. Houston, the building manager's on line two. I would appreciate it if you'd hold all the other calls, Mrs. Pryor, except for Judge Myerson. We do need the continuance of 10 days. I still have to go to New York next week. I'm sorry, what you were saying, Mrs. Uh, Colombo? I found out that you had ordered the intercoms. Uh, this intercom and the one in Mrs. Pryor's office. Yes, I ordered them when the old ones became dysfunctional. They've never been in my home. They've been here about five weeks. The secretary has confirmed that. I'm sorry, Mr. Houston, but I did hear the voices. Who is this uh, Martin person? The husband knew that Martin was going to kill his wife. He didn't want her to suffer. And you're hypothesizing from that that I uh, had my wife murdered? Well, it, it couldn't have been you, Mr. Houston. There weren't any intercoms. Sergeant, have there been any other recent deaths in our neighborhood? No, sir, none. Mrs. Colombo, uh, your name is not uh, totally unfamiliar to me. I think I've read it, haven't I? Uh, what they call a, a byline in that throwaway newspaper that we get. I work for the paper. That has nothing to do with what I heard. Working news ladies whom I've met tend to exercise a strong, creative imagination. I think it has something to do with an understandable, excessive ambition, what's usually thought of as a man's profession. Well, I'll try to confine my ambition to reviewing the PTA show. For now, I have an appointment with my dog's doctor, which is probably just as well, because I've embarrassed myself enough for one day, haven't I? Mr. Houston, may I ask you a question? Yes, of course. The paper said your wife had just come from the hairdressers. I believe she had had her hair done, yes. Why would a woman with a new hairdo ruin it with an electric hair dryer? She never got a chance to tell me. Perhaps she didn't like it. I guess we'll never know. You'd think I could have figured that out for myself. I am afraid I have embarrassed all of us. I keep doing that. Mrs. Colombo. If your husband had been in my position, I'm sure he would have done the same thing. I'm sure of it. Well, you'll have to ask him about that, Sergeant. You'll have to come to dinner when he gets home. Oh, thank you. Dinner? He's like a new dog, Mrs. Colombo. Like a new animal. Vitamins, tonics, like night and day. A little science, a little insight. And he's a different dog. Doctor, he looks exactly the same. The same? He's got no zest, no sparkle. Mrs. Colombo, he's only a dog. He ain't Sammy Davis, Jr. My assistant will have your bill. Come on. 
<laughs> Let's go. Maybe you ain't Sammy Davis, Jr. But to me, you look like a philosopher. going to be all right now, Martin. I'm positive. It's so quiet, you can hear the carousel from the pier. We're not going to have any more trouble with Mrs. Colombo. Sometimes I can hear the carousel from my apartment. I love that. We have to be very careful, Charles. About everything. About Mrs. Colombo. You were not altogether careful the last time. The last time, I had a very astute lawyer. But my lawyer forgotten about the intercoms. If I hadn't taken them out of the house after your wife had the accident... I don't want to talk about that, please. Well, what do you want to talk about? Uh, I'm trying to deal with our situation. You couldn't even deal with your own wife, Charles. Mrs. Colombo knows my name. I don't want anyone else hurt. She knows you bought those intercoms, I don't too. want any more police. She knows what Martin did. The police don't believe her. What else does she know? Nothing. Nothing. She doesn't even believe herself now. So, we're out of danger? Yes, we are. In your opinion. I'm glad you agree. You know, you frighten me, Mr. Houston. You're a very sensitive man. You feel these things deeply. And you know everything, don't you, Mr. Houston? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Columbus. Oh, thank you. Is this where it happened? Yes, over there. Yeah, I heard it on the radio. A police report prominent Los Angeles criminal attorney Charles Houston was a victim of suicide early this morning, so they say. Yes, they found his body down there. I can't even bear to look. Then don't look. Is that what you're still investigating, Sergeant? What's that? A suicide? Well, a, uh, a police officer found a locked car registered to Mr. Houston. I'm having it open. Oh. I like drumsticks. I love them. Ah, thanks. Excuse me. Any clues? No, no clues. And no suicide note, huh? No, there's no suicide note. I don't see any yet. What? Well, map. It wasn't suicide, you know. Mrs. Colombo. Charles Houston wanted a judge to give him a continuance for 10 days so he could go to New York. People who want things like that and contemplating suicide, Sergeant, that's absurd. With all due respect, ma'am, what a man says at 2 in the afternoon and what he feels at 2 in the morning, those are two different things. Despondent, his wife dead, 
Blaming himself, maybe. Why would poor Charlie blame himself? Martin killed Joanne. I think Martin killed Charlie, too. Mrs. Colombo, I really don't want to go on with this anymore. Oh, but I think you have to, Sergeant. Why do I have to? Because you have to figure out why a man who was going to throw himself over a cliff went to the trouble of locking his car. Mrs. Colombo, just a minute. He's away, and I really wanted to surprise him. Is your surprise easy? How much? Full tune-up, new top, new upholstery. Ugh. What happened to the upholstery? The dog ate it. Fix all dents. And a new side mirror. Hey, job. Free chrome. Call it five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars. We'll throw in a free side mirror. I can't afford anything like five thousand dollars. Here. What if we didn't do the upholstery? Omit upholstery. Cut out three hundred dollars. Okay, now you're talking. That's very reasonable. I'll just take the upholstery for three hundred bucks. Lady, you want the upholstery alone, you don't get the volume discount. The upholstery by itself is $950. Oh, well, now that's very expensive, isn't it? Ma'am, you drive a foreign car, everything's expensive. You tell me what it is you want to cut out. Well, the tuna. What do you think? I guess we could live without that. And the top. Well, doesn't look that bad, does it? That leaves bodywork, paint, and chrome. Which one do you want? I think I'll just take the free mirror. Mm -hmm. registered at your hotel with the police convention. I talked to him there in London. Uh, Ma'am, please, will you please check again? Two hours ago? Well, why did he go on to New York? I don't... Ma'am, ma'am, please listen to me. Did he... T did he tell you where he would be staying? Do you know the other policeman's name? No, no, no. I'm sorry, no. I'm sure he'll be calling. Thank you.
name is Roy. I saw you come in. What do you want? I do the gardening. I don't know what to do. I don't even know if I still work in this place. Nobody tells me anything. Can you tell me? No, I, I don't know anything. You're gonna have to ask somebody else. <laughs> I just don't know what to do. I know. His garden said the same thing. If Mr. Houston had a partner, or even if his wife were still alive, there'd be somebody to tell me to close up the office or what to do with the files. How long did you work for Mr. Houston? Eleven years. Now it's like I'm waiting for somebody to tell me, go home, Mrs. Pryor, it's all over. Only there's nobody to say it. It's all over. Ooh la la. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You know, I can't help thinking that policeman the other day. That Sergeant Norris had something to do with Mr. Houston's death. Why would you think that? The salads here are terrific. It all started with new intercoms. Mr. Houston brought them. Said something about a mix-up with the police, something some silly woman was saying about how his wife died. Eat. He brought the intercoms after Mrs. Houston's accident? Yes, but he asked me to tell the police we'd had them for weeks. You, you won't tell them I lied. If I liked somebody that much, I'd lie too. Would you do something for me, Mrs. Pryor? You're the only one who came to see me. Sometimes I work for a little newspaper. And Mr. Houston was going to tell me about an interesting friend of his named Martin. I think it was very important to Mr. Houston that I interview his friend. Do you know anybody at all named Martin? First or last name? Could be either one. We have a machine. Anything? No last name Martins in the personals. There's a Martin Reeves, Mr. Houston's florist. No, I don't think so. How far back do these clients go? Five years. Martin Elizabeth, Martin Eves, Martin Kenneth. Kenneth Martin? Oh, dear. He's only 14. A personal injury case. Well, can we try some first names? I'll get my book. Why don't you try 1A26? Martin Bader, 1401 Ocean Avenue. Such a nice, polite man. I knew he couldn't have done it. Not guilty 1A. 1A? What's that? Murder. Mr. Houston defended him last month. He would... Excuse me. What, is something wrong? In 11 years, I never got the billings mixed up. We had to buy this computer marvel. May I? Certainly. It didn't send Martin Bader a bill. In criminal cases, Mr. Houston always billed in advance unless there was some special arrangement. And there's nothing like that in there. Can I keep this, Mrs. Pryor? Well, that's what it's for. Do you think that's the right Martin? I suppose I'll have to call him, won't I? Thank you very much for your help. Take care of yourself. Mrs. Colombo. Could we have lunch together again sometime? Oh, yes. I'd like that very much.
closes at 4.30. I have to talk to Sergeant Norris. Now, eight in the morning isn't good enough. Well, then, could you give me his home number? I know it's against regulations, but can't you? No, ma'am, I can't explain. I can only talk to Sergeant Norris. All right. If you'll try to reach him, then. Mrs. Columbo. What? Yes, with a C. He has my home number. Please have him call me back right away. Well, did you leave a message for him? Would you please keep trying? Yes, yes, I'll be here. I'll wait for his call. Thank you very much. Charlotte. That's what I do. I work for a living. I'll be home in an hour. Mr. Alden, it's Kate Columbo. Please, Mrs. Columbo, I'm not a well man. I have to talk to you. At 2.20, you have to talk? Mr. Alden, please. There's been murder. Two murders. I'll take 500 words next Tuesday. This isn't a news story. It's happening to me. 
The murderer knows. I know who he is. And I am all alone in the house with my daughter. Now, you listen to me. You get your daughter and you put her in your car and you bring her here to me. Now, both of you. You understand that? Now. Yes, yes, all right. trying to reach Sergeant Norris. I am only going to say this once. There is no time to repeat or explain. Tell him I know who murdered Joanne Houston and her husband. His name is Martin Bader, and he has taken my daughter. He has my daughter. She is alone with him. I think they are at the Houston house. I am going there now. Please help me.
Hickory Dickory Duck. What? <laughs> Listening to your house, Mrs. Colombo. Jenny isn't here. She never was. Tape! Where is she? Walking home. Probably home already. She wasn't nearly as frightened as you are, Mrs. Colombo. Don't be afraid. I was very careful. She didn't even see my face. Jenny! Jenny, can you hear me? Jenny, are you all right? Jennifer, are you in your room? playing detective, heard murders where there weren't any. While prowling the house in the dark, she tripped and fell down the stairs and broke her little neck. <laughs> Gas. Gas. Why? Tell me. In the kitchen, when I heard Jenny's voice, I thought the gas might make an explosion. Drive you out, bring the police fast. I don't know. I didn't have anything else. A house full of gas, Mark. A lady with a broken neck. They'll try to make the pieces fit. <laughs>